Hello again, and welcome back to the Academy of the Magical Art. I am Frater Ophiel, and we left off talking about vibration, frequency, and the law of synthesis. Um, we were discussing how when two things, two vibrations or two frequencies join together, they make a third frequency or a third vibration completely unique of its own using the frequencies of the original two. We use the example of a mother, father, and child, um, obvious synthesis of energies. But we can also apply that concept to our everyday lives, our own personal frequency, and what we are putting ourselves around. My frequency is vibrating one specific way. I walk up to a person and I shake their hand. Our particles join together, our energies merge, our frequencies merge, and at that moment in time, we have created a third energy for that moment in time um, that will continue to react that way because of quantum entanglement until that energy is separated. So what did I just say? Every time you shake somebody's hand, you entangle your particles with them. And unless you consciously sever that bond, you have joined your particles together. Quantum entanglement has just incurred, occurred and you have picked up their frequency and created something new. This is why it is important when we are putting ourselves in environments, um, touching objects, meeting new people, so on and so forth, that we take time on a daily basis to purify ourselves, to uh, consciously banish those energies and purify ourselves. Because if we do not, we can continually pick up more and more and more of these frequencies, more of these vibrations. It throws our own personal frequency out of whack, and in doing so, creates a state of disharmony or dysfunction. So today I want to talk about different ways that we can address this situation, um, because it's inevitable. You encounter people every day in your everyday life, work, shopping, um, going out in public, unless you are a complete social recluse and you stay in your house 24-7, you are constantly exposing yourself to other energies. And it's important that you are constantly, consciously severing yourself from those energies unless they are serving a higher positive purpose. So ways that we can do that. Well, first and foremost, we'll go with the obvious. Smudging. Okay, people use sage, cedar, lemongrass, um, various different other things. Palo Santo is a really good one. Um, th these are ways to purify energy. The vibratory frequency of these herbs, or in the case of Palo Santo, burning this wood, repels negative energy. It repels a low vibrating frequency. And either it will reject it, like when on our physical plane we see two negative magnets collide, they push each other away. Well, spiritually or vibrationally, a really high positive energy joins with a negative energy. It will either raise its vibration to meet it or it will be repelled and push itself away. So that's a really good way to do that. Meditating and grounding out your energies is another really good way. Um, we naturally walk around with rubber soled shoes on all the time. So rubber uh, wraps around wires and insulates from the electricity that runs through your walls. Why wouldn't it do the same thing to your physical body? It is an insulator, so therefore it's uh, blocking that circuit between you yourself and the mother, um, stopping her from doing uh, one of her jobs that she loves to do for us, which is to ground us out and purify us and keep our energy nice and clean so by taking some time if weather is permitting to take your shoes off and go walk around outside for five ten minutes or just stand there um, you will feel that connection take place and your energy start to get grounded out these are all natural ways to do that um, weather not permitting like up here it's winter and quite cold out um, it's good to sit down for 5, 10, 15 minutes uh, in the morning and or at night and meditate and manually, physically, consciously ground out your energies that way. Um, if you look in the meditation and yoga folder, there are and will be more videos on that um, from one of our other teachers. Um, he does a wonderful job of helping people to ground themselves out and teaching them to meditate, to still themselves and to still their minds. These are all very important to do. So I highly encourage you checking out what is available now and staying tuned for more information on that subject. Um, there are also holistic therapies such as uh, Reiki and other energetic treatments uh, that can be done to do that. 
Um, same thing, achieve that desired effect of balancing out the chakras, which are the seven main energetic points of our energetic body. Um, and there are also higher chakras outside of the body, but that's, but we'll get to that at a later time. For now, we won't worry about anything past the uh, first seven, which are the root, the sacral, the solar, the heart, the throat, the third eye, and the crown. And these comprise our physical body, um, and they all put off uh, an emission, uh, a frequency emission, um, which makes up our aura. Okay, so there's a little info on the energetic body. You can also do things like carrying stones and crystals. These, uh, this is a fantastic way of not only uh, protecting yourself from external energies and frequencies, but to also uh, keep your vibration and frequency in a healthy state um, and raise it to another level when done properly. Um, to raise it to a higher frequency, if that is your desire. Gems and crystals have been used for thousands of years, um, ranging from the uh, Jewish or Hebrew priests would wear them on their breastplate. You'd find them in Babylonia, um, South America, all over. There are remnants of crystals being used as a sacred tool um, for vibration because of what they do. They have uh, Quartz, for instance, has a very, very pure vibration and it's very stable. So they use quartz and technology. They started using te quartz and technology in, I know, the 1970s, probably before that. Um, but they had like the quartz radio where they would touch a wire to a quartz um, and it would emit a frequency. Um, another doctor who won a Nobel Prize discovered that you can use electricity to program quartz. Now, applying that, we can also use thought being electricity to program quartz and other crystals to perform a desired job. Um, again, this is called programming. You can program objects. We will be making a video on that in time to come as well. Um, but for now, we'll just focus on the basics of carrying crystals. And, you know, quartz is a good one to carry. Amethyst uh, will help open up your intuition. It's protective. Tiger's eye is a wonderful that you can carry. Um, there are all kinds of frequencies that you can place on your person that will um, help achieve desired goals. Um, I also want to note, though, that carrying too many crystals can do more harm than good because uh, you're taking a whole bunch of frequencies and jamming them together and ex expecting them to make a harmonic. Now, if you are a musician, you know that you can press this key, this key, and this key on a piano and have a harmonic sound. But if you're taking a couple of keys and mixing them with a couple other keys and just pushing them at random, it will make a very non-harmonic sound, not appeasing to the ear because those frequencies just don't mesh together. Certain frequencies sound beautiful together and other frequencies, not so much. The same applies with the frequencies of stones. Certain frequencies will work really, really well together and make a gorgeous harmonic and you know help raise your body to a very, very good energetic level and other uh, combinations are rather counterproductive and can make people feel sick and um, out of balance and not grounded and all kinds of things can happen. So um, I suggest doing some research, uh, look up things like the metaphysical properties of crystals and crystal vibrations, things like that. We will be posting a more in-depth video on specific crystals that you can carry in crystal combinations in time to come. Um, so subscribe so you can get an update on that if that's something that you're interested in. But until that time, um, I suggest doing some research before just throwing crystals in your pockets or, you know, a lot of my, the female friends that I know like to carry them uh, in their bra, their brassiere or in their purse or whatever. Um, that's awesome. But, you know, when my wife takes her bra off and 20 stones fall out and these couple go together and these couple do not, well, that's problematic. So it's good to, but less is sometimes more, um, just something to think about. Um, unless you really know what you're doing and you're making a good frequency. You can also take crystals and place them around your home. Uh, this is called making a crystal grid. This will affect the frequency in the atmosphere of uh, your living space or in your car or your workspace if you choose to do so. I like to use bigger crystals for things like that. Um, and then also take a crystal wand and draw lines and connect the crystals consciously so that they make a grid so that when you walk into the room, you feel completely different. Um, 
these are tools that can be used all over the place. I'll carry a couple of stones and some resins and a couple of woods on my person. And I know that a couple of them really, really protect and a couple of them raise vibration. Um, and it works rather well for me. Not everybody works with every vibration. For instance, I myself love Multivite. My wife hates it. She is a uh, very, very middle earth oriented person. She likes the physical frequencies of the earth. And when you take a tektite, a stone that fell from the sky, or a tektite that, in the case of Multivite, is a meteorite that hit the earth and combined with the earth's energies, uh, she does not like that at all. It makes her feel ill. I like to uh, play a game where I'll blindfold her every once in a while and put stones in her hand and have her guess which stone it is. Her being intuitive and very in tune with frequencies, she can guess. Um, well, not guess. She knows what stones she's holding simply by touching them. Um, some people are very adept at doing that, and other people, that's a trait that has to be learned, a skill that has to be uh, honed in on, and a muscle that has to be strengthened through exercising it. There are many other things that can be um, done along these lines to help keep your uh, frequency in a desired harmonic, like I said. Um, but I, this will have to do for now. We're getting kind of in there on time. So I'm going to wrap it up. I uh, thank you for joining with me at the Academy of the Magical Arts. I hope that you are blessed. And until next time, blessed be.